The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. All the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to f into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. The slave replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed a fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then the elder son became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Do you think that God will love you any more or any less because of something you've done? Do you think that God will love you any more or any less because of something you've done? I remember something that happened in the winter semester of my first year of university during Lent. I'm a pretty all or nothing person and I decided that first Lent, living on my own for the first time, to go all out. I gave up alcohol, meat, video games. Even my agnostic vegetarian roommate said, what are you going to do with yourself? And I said, you know, I don't even know. And so I began to look for things. What should I do? There was this rosary pamphlet on my desk. You know, one of those light blue Pray the Rosary Daily pamphlets? Of course, I had no intention of doing that. To be honest, the only reason it was on my desk is that I like the picture of Mary's face. But if you've seen this pamphlet I'm talking about, you know, Mary is looking at you kind of like, you know you should. And I thought, 
Ugh, daily. But deep down I knew it was possible. After all, my grandmother who lived with us prayed the rosary every morning, and we had to be quiet until she was done and joined us for breakfast. And she always joined us partway through breakfast, so I knew it didn't take that long. And so I began. It was a Tuesday or Friday, I can't remember exactly. But I do remember praying the Sorrowful Mysteries. In the pamphlet, there's a suggestion on what to meditate on for each mystery. So the first Sorrowful Mystery, the Agony in the Garden, for true contrition for sin. So there I was, kneeling by my bed, looking at the picture, trying to think about true contrition for sin. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, the kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. By the way, <laughs> please don't pray like that, okay? Anyways, a few Hail Marys in, God answered my prayer. True contrition, truly being sorry, I realize it's not just a feeling. It means actually choosing to at least be willing to try to do things differently. If someone were to hit you and then say sorry, but fully intend to hit you again, you wouldn't agree that they were sorry. There were things in my life that I had felt bad about for a long time, but I had never made the decision to even try to make a difference. And it dawned on me, all those years of feeling bad about these things, I had never once actually been sorry. I wasn't fooling anyone except myself. And God had just showed me that he had seen right through this all along. So I began to cry. It wasn't just sobbing, it was a deep cry, like from the bottom of my lungs. And I think I was crying because in that moment, I experienced what I can only describe as the kindness of God. God wasn't punishing me. God wasn't rejecting me. God saw right through my pretense and was loving me just the same. I was crying, I guess, because for the first time in a long time, I saw what God's love was really like. You know, maybe I'm not doing a good job of explaining myself with the story. I'm just trying to share with you something of what the kindness of God is like. Because it is literally from another world. Each of our readings in today's Mass speak to us of how God wants to bring this other world to us. Or bring us into this other world. It's really the same thing. St. Paul says in our second reading, If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. If we are in Christ, which you are if you've been baptized, this other world is already present within us. We are already living in that other world, even if we haven't quite realized it. And for those of us who aren't baptized, God is inviting you to do the same. In our first reading, Joshua and the people of Israel finally enter into the land that God promised he would bring them to. The promised land was more than just a territory on a map. It was another kind of life, another world that God was bringing them into. And in today's gospel, the house of the Father is like this other world. The whole parallel, in fact, revolves around the house of the Father. Both sons once lived in the house of the father. Both sons leave it. The younger son runs off at the beginning. At the end, the elder son is found outside and refuses to go in. And the father, he goes out of the house to try and bring each of them back. And just like how the promised land was not merely a geographical territory, the house of the father was not merely a building with four walls. It's a relationship. It was a way of seeing themselves and their father. And both sons lost sight of that relationship because of what they had done, although what they did was completely different. The younger son would say, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired hands. 
And the elder son says, listen, for all these years, I have been working like a slave for you. Somehow, they both ended up operating under the same lie. That their father would love them more or less because of the things they had done. In a sense, they were both living in a different world now than their father. And so what's the father to do? How can he win them over? How can he bring them back home? How can he invite them back from that different world into which they have fallen? Only through his kindness. And this is the wonderful way that God reconciles us to himself, as we prayed in our opening prayer. As we hear in our second reading, in Christ, God is reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them. It's only through experiencing God's kindness that God reconciles us to himself. So where are you experiencing God's kindness in your life?